I hope, beyond all else, that I am mistaken, whether it's due to a misinterpretation of what I saw, if the events actually occurred, or that the events themselves were entirely fabricated by my then fatigued mind. I had just ended a long shift at work, and the energy drinks I had consumed during the day kept me mentally and physically hyperactive after my shift had ended. To expand the excess energy, I decided to go for a walk around my neighborhood. What some may call upper middle, my subdivision is a sprawling area where the suburban establishments coexist with nature rather than supplant it. Nature is kept at bay so as to not intrude upon man's mundane comfort, but are also allowed to grow freely in segmented sections through which trails have been cut to allow for nature walks. The word harmony would be adequate to describe the balance established. I explain all this to provide an idea of the area so that the weirdness of what happened truly resonates. I do not live in some rural, uncultivated expanse of land. Man has stamped its mark here, and people can be seen walking their dogs, children riding their bikes, vehicles passing to and fro. You cannot walk around without seeing at least a few people, and the large houses are evidence enough of a very present population. My walk led me down one of the aforementioned paths that cut through a dense pocket of trees and eventually took me to a clearing in the center of which was a small pond. North, up a small hill, was a sort of recreational hub between two different sections of the neighborhood. I sat at the pond for a while, hoping the still water would transfer its restfulness to my own caffeine-stimulated mind. But I still buzzed from the stimulant and decided to jog up the hill and beyond hoping to just tire myself out. I arrived at the hub, benches, playground, and a building from which sporting equipment could be rented, and continued my jog towards the next portion of the path, which continued on the opposite side of the street. A car was coming, so I stopped to allow it to pass. I would have continued across, but something to the left caught my eye. Four figures were standing together, two of whom were gesturing casually towards the nearby forests and houses. The other two, I came to realize with a sudden and terrible awe, were clearly not human. Usually, when terrors such as these are noticed, they appear in shadows, hidden by darkness or veil. Not at 6 p.m. when the sun still shares its revealing light with the world. I don't want to go through the pain of remembrance necessary to adequately describe those other two beings. I'll say only that they were alien in the truest, most base sense, foreign to everything natural to this world. The two who were vaguely humanoid were clothed in what appeared to be form-fitting gray suits, buttoned and fastened immaculately. From that distance, I couldn't make out their faces, but could tell that they were hairless. They were engaged in a speech of sorts, obvious by the way they moved their hands, as if orating. Something about their behavior seemed vaguely familiar. I recognized the air of their mannerisms as something I'd seen before as a child. The nature of their interaction, the fact that these clearly inhuman beings were just out in the open, going about their business as if they belonged, terrified me. Cars went by. Yet, none stopped or even slowed. Other joggers passed, totally unaware of the weird gathering mere feet from them. What really unnerved me was that even dogs hadn't noticed the strange visitors. And if horror movies have taught me anything, it's that dogs and animals in general can pick up on this kind of creepy shit. I wanted to simply walk away, tell myself that my brain was just fried from a terrible idea to jump started with energy drinks but the realness of their presence wouldn't let me move on. They weren't fatigue-induced hallucinations. I've seen the immaterial apparitions projected by a sleep-deprived mind. Those four weren't anything like that. So, without any other course of action left to take, I walked towards them. I was standing about six feet from the group, and not a thing changed. They hadn't noticed me. Nor had they made any indication that they noticed the other people casually walking and playing throughout the area. This 
somewhat less in a trepidation because, at least for the time being, they didn't appear hostile. The two formerly dressed beings were still doing what was obviously some kind of presentation, and the other two seemed enthralled, though that's complete speculation on my part. I think it was my focus on them that pulled them into a state of awareness. One of them stopped speaking. At this proximity, I could see that they had no faces. Just stretches of pale blue skin where mouths and sensory organs would be. This stretch moved in conjunction with their gesturing, like a facial pulsation. So I equated this to the act of speech. The one that stopped and looked around, as if it was trying to locate the source of the focus. I was practically right in front of him, and curiosity momentarily usurped my fear, causing me to focus even more on him. As I expected, his gaze zoned in on my location, though he still didn't see me as I saw him. He nudged his partner, who still ignorantly orated, and then the both of them stared at the spot where I stood. The one who hadn't first noticed me, we'll call him tall, since he was taller, made a weird gesture with his right hand. He held it at his chest, fist at first closed, fingers facing me, then opened his hand slowly. He then pantomimed the motion that suggested the grasping of a ball and turned his hand to the left. Despite the abstract nature of this display, I got the sense that time was involved somehow. He ceased turning and felt a slight shift in the environment. Nothing dramatic or even noticeable, but I sensed that a definite change had occurred, whether it was localized to the immediate area around us or in the fabric of space and time, I couldn't tell you. I just know that things had been reversed, or that these visitors had rewound something. Then, they truly saw me. The two presenters were immediately taken aback, their dual recoil very human in nature. The other two entities made movements, denoting some incomprehensible reaction. My temporarily repressed fear returned to breathe fervor. I was still very much afraid, despite how startled they were of my sudden appearance. Short, the shorter figure, did a series of gestures towards Tall. Then, to the two bizarre entities, and then again to his partner. Tall made gestures that suggested attempts to calm the monstrous duo who moved like nightmares behind us. Once they were presumably placated, Tall returned his attention to me. I could be wrong, but I think he actually straightened his suit and made efforts to regain composure, as if he planned on making a formal address. He held up his hands, palms facing me, fingers, I had just noticed there were twelve of them in each hand, stretched wide, pushed forward. He hadn't made physical contact, but I felt a force pressed upon me and a subsequent connection of some kind established. I felt the intimation of mental contact, dare I say, a telepathic connection of sorts. Then, I heard a voice. If stark nothingness had a sound, it would be that voice. There was both a substance and an emptiness to it. I heard him speak and I'm not sure if the voice and its unnerving hollowness scared me more, or the message it spoke. It said, We're terribly sorry. We seem to have arrived a bit earlier than appropriate. By our measurements, you should all be gone at this point in time. But we can see now that we underestimated your existential persistence. Please forgive us for this intrusion. Unfortunately, our guests have expressed great interest in this planetary property and wish to make a purchase as soon as possible. We will expedite your removal shortly. Thank you for your continued patience in these coming weeks as we make the necessary adjustments. After those words, I guess I fainted, 
or was purposely rendered unconscious because I walk on the sidewalk with a man and a woman standing over me. They said I had been jogging in place, staring at nothing, and suddenly collapsed. They helped me to my feet and left when I assured them that I was okay. Just tired. I walked over to a bench and sat down, trying to process what had happened. It was then that the realization hit me. The familiarity of the visitor's mannerisms. They behaved just as the realtors had when my family first moved into this neighborhood 12 years ago. Showing off the house, making exaggerated gestures as they enter rooms to point out desirable features. Those two beings, in some other sphere of time, were showing off an earth where humans had all died. I returned home and started typing this up. As I said at the beginning, I hope my mind was just playing tricks on me, conjuring up some weird waking dream as it tried to reconcile its tiredness with the effects of the energy drinks. Perhaps it just turned a distant memory in a terrible hallucination. God, I hope that's the truth. But I can't bring myself to accept that it is.